Boulder's top stories this week. The Broadway Euclid project cools down as students return, Council learns the results of the city's Energy Future Survey, and Boulder is nominated for a Sportacular Award. Hi, I'm Natalie Wood. It won't be long until school is back in session, and since that means CU students are coming back into town, the Broadway Euclid Transportation Improvements Project is currently wrapping up its first phase of improvements. In an effort to minimize impacts to students and the public, city staff has made sure project phases coincide with summer breaks. That includes the completion of current intersection improvements at Broadway and 18th Street by the end of summer. The project has recently met some other goals like completion of the final design, utility relocation work, and right-of-way acquisitions for the project. The Broadway project has also secured all state and federal clearances and construction could start as soon as this fall. The project was previously on hold while awaiting clearances from the Department of Interior in Washington, D.C. Once the bigger part of the project begins, construction will take approximately one year to complete. In general, Broadway will be reduced to one lane of traffic in each direction, as well as intermittent side street closures. For complete project phasing, visit bouldertransportation.net. Keep watching Inside Boulder News for updates on the project's status, construction schedule, and traffic impacts. One way to avoid the pain of construction is to skip getting behind the wheel and hop on the bus instead. The recently released 2010 U.S. 36 Mobility Report examined the modes of transportation people use to commute back and forth on one of Colorado's busiest travel corridors. Results show that over 70% of trips taken on U.S. 36 are by solo drivers, 7% of trips are by carpoolers, and about 6% are by bus. The report also shows that bus ridership is far more common in and around Boulder than at the eastern end of 36. This may have something to do with the fact that Boulder employees have the best access to RTD EcoPasses with twice as many EcoPasses per employee as Denver. While 6% of commuters taking the bus may not sound like much, their positive actions led to more than 36 million reduced vehicle miles traveled on the highway resulting in less pollution and traffic and furthering many of our community's sustainability goals. The busy corridor is home to major universities, federal laboratories, retail, and employment centers in Boulder, Denver, and in between. In addition, growing residential areas and heavy tourism have increased congestion on US 36. The Energy Future Project reached a significant milestone this week when Council approved language and second reading that will put the question of whether the city should form a local electric utility on the ballot. Council passed two related measures unanimously, with some expressing strong support for municipalization and a few others saying they think it is time for the community to weigh in. The ballot item and accompanying ordinance spell out several limitations including a provision that rates cannot exceed those charged by Excel at the time of acquisition. If the cost of buying Excel's system turn out to be significantly higher than the city has projected, and those costs would result in higher rates for customers at the time of the purchase, Council cannot move forward. Council also adopted guidelines that make rate parity and the city's environmental values key factors in all subsequent rate-making decisions. The council discussion followed a brief presentation by a consultant from National Research Center, a Boulder firm that conducted a statistically valid phone survey on behalf of the city. The survey, which has a margin of error of plus or minus 5%, found that 71% of registered voters in Boulder either somewhat supported or strongly supported the creation of a local power utility. The voters most likely to support the measure are between 18 and 34 years old, renters who earn less than $50,000, and those who have lived in the city for less than five years. Council will take one more procedural vote, a third and final reading, at its meeting on August 16th. More information about the specific ballot language, the survey results, and the project are available on the city's website. The conversation about Boulder's energy future isn't the only matter drawing attention these days. A world-renowned sports magazine has taken notice of the 2011 Ultimate College Championships, an event Boulder hosted last Memorial Day. 
Sports Travel Magazine nominated the event for a 2011 Sports Travel Award, and publisher Timothy Schneider says the people of Boulder should take great pride in knowing an event held in our city is being recognized for its excellence. Events are nominated by the readers of Sports Travel. The criteria for nomination and voting include superior organization of and attendance at the event, a superior experience for the competitors and spectators at the event, and how the site or venue served to enhance the event. Official ballots are available in the July and August issues of Sports Travel Magazine. You can also find more information and vote online at sportstravelmagazine.com. The winners of the 2011 Sports Travel Award will be announced at a ceremony in Las Vegas on October 6. That's all the time we have for this week. You can connect with Inside Boulder News on Facebook by submitting news tips and questions. Just search for City of Boulder Channel 8. I'm Natalie Wood. Stick around for more Inside Boulder next.